Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum viewers. This is Dr. Lubna Shakir. Welcome to Live HU, e-learning lecture series by international experts. This is the inaugural session of this series that entitled as Mastering the Novel Techniques in Online Teaching by International Experts. This series is graced by the presence of our board director, Professor Dr. Muhammad Khalid Parvez. Besides him, I would really like to thank Dr. Suheri Jaz from University of Cambridge for joining us. Thank you, sir, for joining us. He has been associated with University of Cambridge for more than a decade. Besides him, there is Dr. Muhammad Akram from Paracelsus University, Medical University, Austria. Thank you, sir, for being us. And we're starting the session. First, we will have a recitation from Holy Quran. I would like to invite uh, Hafiz Wahidullah Saab for recitation. Sir Hafiz Wahidullah Saab, please. Auz billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. رب المشرقين ورب المغربين فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يخرج منهما اللؤلؤ والمرجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وله الجوار المنشات في البحر كالأعلام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان Shukriya, sir. So moving onwards, first of all, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Muhammad Khalid Parvez. He will share with us the requirements or the standards of the HEC or expectations of the HEC, as well as he will elaborate or share with the audience and the, viewers, the steps forward we have taken towards the betterment of the students. So Professor Dr. Khalid Parvez, Please share your views and comments. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Lubna. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I am Dr. Khalid Pravid, Director of Ajwari University. So the, the first point which I would like to share with you is that why we have started this online teaching. So this purely it is in the interest of the students. It's not interest of the teachers or anyone else. It was in the interest of the students. So if we don't start this online, online teaching, so where the students will go? And who knows that up to how long this uh, COVID-19 will go? The problem is now we have to learn to live with this COVID. So we, we can't escape from this one. So we have to learn that how we can work and we can live with this one. So far that it was the best option that we should go to the online teaching. So I requested to the honorable chairman of the very university board of governors and he very kindly accepted my request and we went to this online system. So it, it is new. It's not new only for the very university teaching and students. It is new for everyone. All the universities, it's uh, in the Pakistan and in the Punjab especially. So the Punjab Educa Higher Education Department, Higher Education Commission is also planning to provide this training that how to be a effective teaching, online teaching can be. So we started earlier than that one. When I received this letter from the Honorable Chairman from Higher, Punjab Higher Education Commission, so I wrote to him that we are going to do this one. He was very happy. He said, actually, you are helping. So th this is the reason that we have started this one in the interest of the students. Now, there are some requirements that how to work with this one. So the Higher Education Commission established those requirements. And it's not only in, in just they, they have written some papers. The Honorable Chairman of the Higher Education Commission organized five meetings 
with the vice chancellors of universities of pakistan these, these meetings were online so this is on all the suggestions of the vice chancellor and the uh, wisdom and and the um, provisions of the higher education commission the honorable chairman higher education commissions developed some sops that this is the way you can go this one we are following those sops if you want you can visit the the website of the hajwari university and you can see that all the sops all the required statutory bodies are there so we are going exactly according to that one so we have just i will elaborate few of those one the first condition was that the curriculum which is going to be presented online should be passed by the head of department then by the dean then by the rector and then by the online academic council we are going through this process this just the just last step is left and we are going to that one now so we are going to achieve that one also so there were many complaints not from the hajwari university student from all from, from the students of all the universities the hcc is facing those one and the honorable chairman of the higher education commission is providing the replies to that one now now the number is going to be reduced day by day so now the peoples are accepting this one this fact that actually we have to go to the online teaching without that there is no other there is no other way if you just look at the other words the the new york has just they, they have said now that we are going to start the academic sessions in the next year not now not in this year in the next coming year so how long we can sit in the houses and wait for that day when we will open these things so this is the only way we are going that one and now once again i am extremely thankful these uh, our resource person uh, dr sohel ajaz and dr mohammad akram they very kindly agreed to help the students of pakistan on the platform of hajwari university i am again thankful to all and the guest of honor dr sheikh umar sheikh sir thank you very much thank you dr saab thank you so much for sharing your comments and i will definitely add in this cv in this uh, situation definitely alhamdulillah jwari university has started its online classes from the 16th march it was the first day when we have launched a few of the classes from the department of the pharmacy and even media studies and business administration two classes we have started we came across many problems day by day and for resolving those problems we have started or launched two training sessions one was the in house training session and other is the external training session and i would definitely comment over here and will appreciate dr saheli jals he comes forward and he has sent a text to me that i want to serve the nation right now in this time the nation needs me as i am not in pakistan i am sitting in the cambridge and working from the cambridge platform but i want to contribute towards the society of the pakistan and uh, i have shared this uh, this idea with my higher management and all said welcome welcome sir and we will definitely launch our training sessions or a series so keeping this idea in our mind we have launched this lecture series then we have requested dr mohammad akram he came forward with an open heart he said that definitely i will join you people and i'm extremely thankful these for uh, as these pakistani people are working from out stations and out of pakistan but with a head with such an open heart no doubt in pakistan many people are supporting us and the, they, they, that they are patriotic and they are saying that we will do for the nation and we will do this for the nation but you people are actually doing for the nation and i'm really grateful and i salute to you people that who are serving in this situation and contributing their time towards the nation of pakistan and especially for the hajwari university no doubt uh, our students will get benefited and the students of other universities and uh, from other platforms and colleges will be benefited by this session as well and uh, uh, my message for the students who are online and having a look on us there please stay tuned this is really an informative session you will learn a lot our teachers are uh, watching you people and uh, sir sohail all our faculty that is from the pharmacy dpt B business administration computer sciences and the media studies all are online and they are uh, having a look and they are serious and they want to learn something from your side thank you so much with this i would uh, invite dr sohail jaz he has been associated with cambridge 
for last uh, one decade he has more than 120 publications and with the 120 publications in high impact factor uh, uh, sir uh, welcome to the platform of the hajveri university e learning lecture series sir thank you so much for being with us ji sir thank you very much dr lubda for um, arranging all this um, uh, session so actually the main aim of um, uh, this session is just to give you an overview uh, and importance of e-learning under current uh, global situation of covid-19 pandemic it is very important for us to um, um, to learn how to survive and how to you know progress during um, current situation of covid-19 pandemic so i decided um, to you know um, share my contribution from my nation uh, towards uh, sharing my experience in e-learning. So this is a reason uh, we are here. And um, at the same time, I would like uh, to thank the management of Hajvari University for organizing this session. Uh, basically, this, uh, this is a series of lectures. So during my first lecture, I will just give you an overview and importance of e-learning. And during this presentation, I will uh, go through uh, introduction about e-learning, uh, different types of e-learning, different modalities used for e-learning, uh, what are the different benefits of e-learning, how e-learning can impact on our young student and our society, what could be the future of e-learning, and um, how we can develop e-learning culture in our country and as this is very uh, new uh, thing for our country. And at the end, I will give you an overview of um, uh, different key points through which we can um, progress uh, and implement these e-learning techniques in our, in our country. And the most important thing in this thing, uh, in, in e-learning is collaboration among institutes. So I will uh, touch base on these points as well. So as far as introduction about e-learning is concerned, this is basically a delivery of learning, training, or educational program by electronic means and technologies. And e-learning involves the use of computer or electronic devices. So there are so many other way of um, doing e-learning, but I will just focus on these modalities during my presentation. So just to let you know that basically there are two type of e-learning. One is synchronous e-learning and the second one is asynchronous learning. Synchronous learning is that uh, a type of learning where student and teacher, uh, um, you know, they are connected to each other at the same time. So, and the trainer and the learner, they are separated from each other, but they are connected just like we are connected with, with uh, the management uh, an organizer, organizer of Ajwari University. So this type of um, uh, e-learning is called synchronous learning. As far as e-synchronous e-learning is concerned, um, in this, the, the teacher and the student, they are not online at the same time, and the learner is free to decide when he wants to study uh, um, uh, and when he can, you know, uh, get in uh, uh, get in touch with all the recorded material. So, based on uh, the current situation in Pakistan, I would focus on asynchronous e-learning. How we can, you know, uh, make this asynchronous e-learning as an asset of an institute and asset for our country. There are different modalities that we use during e-learning, such as, so as far as synchronous e-learning is concerned, we use Zoom as we are using now, and then we have Skype. Then we can also use Google Classroom or Kaplan. But as far as asynchronous e-learning is concerned, um, there are different modalities such as uh, e-clouds, e-books, e-lectures, YouTube, and in order to make the e-lecture, I will uh, explain um, a very important software, which is called as KindMaster. So um, my um, the second session or the training session would be about uh, utilizing these modalities in e-learning. 
So what are the different benefits of e-learning? So number one, this increase the interactivity and you know you have more interactivity because the students are learning at their own pace at their own time and they are not mentally um, retired they are not mentally tired and this is a reason they they ask a lot of questions and this increase not just in interactivity but uh, increase productivity as well the second benefit of e-learning is that uh, it is a, a, a it is a way of consistent delivery. Anybody can you know access to the e-learning resources at any time, and learning time is reduced because um, uh, you you can you know uh, forward the videos or uh, all the training resources and uh, try to dig down the all uh, the information that is required rather than waiting uh, for the whole hour to uh, retrieve the information needed for that student. So definitely this builds up a lot of confidence in, um, uh, in student and, um, and they get uh, um, good marks and they get you know, very sharp as compared to uh, conventional learning. And similarly, um, through e-learning, global expert can share their knowledge um, for for on demand delivery so um, an example is that if you need um, um, your university uh, uh, to uh, have a specific you know information about uh, certain um, uh, conditions you can you can always contact a, a global expert uh, and they can uh, create an electronic video and that can be shared with 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 all the people in the world and this is how um, the expert knowledge is transferred in a minimal possible time to a greater population for a greater impact. And similarly, you know, as I, as I have already told you that this is a kind of self-pacing learning. So um, uh, the student can learn at their own pace. They can, they can take time in understanding the issues, understanding the topic, understanding the problem. And by this uh, way, they can increase better understanding about um, uh, their, their topic of interest. And similarly, um, this is also um, very good in, um, uh, in, uh, in retention of a lot of resources. We can build our resources so um, teachers don't have to repeat their lectures every day, the same lecture every day, as long as they have recorded their one video session about one lecture, this will be an asset of uh, the university and asset for the teacher. And similarly, once you know um, uh, the student or the teacher can have uh, um, um, can um, be, can master e-learning technique, they don't have to travel to a certain location in order to attend the lecture. So this will contribute in decreasing the transportation cost, decreasing the population, decreasing the pollution, and saving the time. And it will greatly impact reducing environment environmental impacts. So what are the impact of e-learning? So as I have already told you that this will definitely in, improve efficiency in learning and teaching techniques. Um, the end user, they can um, uh, learn at their own convenience and um, we can reach uh, a wider um, uh, range of the popular, wider range of the student. And as I said that this is a self-pacing learning, so definitely this will create um, uh, an, an interest in the study rather than um, uh, just passing um, that course. Uh, teacher will really attain a lot of uh, information about that topic. This is a flexible and rich medium for the student. And as you know that this is a modern way of interaction uh, and increase social skills. It also promote a collaboration, collaborative learning. And it also, you know, give you a new approach to learn and work. So as far as 
I can see the future of e-learning will definitely, it, it will enable us and, uh, and introduce different modern technologies to our learning um, and teaching institutes, such as um, we will, in the near future, we will see a lot of e-books, learning and management system, virtual labs, and different other augmented realities that include articles, journals, um, research papers, and recorded videos. And definitely, it will also increase and promote uh, partnership and experimentation within our country. Different um, uh, um, bodies and different institute and different regulatory bodies will, um, will collaborate in order to share their resources. Uh, and we will see a lot of um, uh, improvement in the clinical practices in Pakistan. And similarly, um, we will see uh, a lot of networking in reviewing and reading e-journals, which will definitely increase a flow of modern and flow of updated information and um, laboratory data uh, from the global world to our country. This will also improve uh, diffusion and sharing knowledge. And um, we will see a lot of blogs, forum in e-learning communities, as the uh, Hajwari University director was saying that um, uh, HEC is going to launch uh, um, uh, e-learning platform. So we will see a lot of interaction online in such, um, uh, in such scenarios. And finally, it will also bring different um, um, multimedia content to our education. So we will see that um, the textbook will be replaced by the e-books and the lesson will be taking place through interactive simulations. So all these things will be a future of our future for our student and future for our teachers. So this is very important for all of us to learn all these uh, new techniques so that we can um, compete um, in, in the higher education globally. So what, what we need in order to build an e-learning culture. So as far as teacher is concerned, they need to develop knowledge and skills in understanding how they can produce e-seminar, how they can create different e-conferences, how they can you know, uh, organize different uh, e-workshops. And they can also participate in different e-training session. So this is the, the right time where nature has basically put us in a place to understand and to learn the new um, approach in, um, uh, in, in our um, learning. So, uh, I mean, this is very important for the teacher to, uh, uh, to understand the need of the time and the need of the global world and try to develop on these uh, scenarios. Um, so as far as students are concerned, they, they mean definitely they have to you know change their attitude. They now have to develop uh, a kind of uh, an approach where they can self-direct themselves, self-motivate themselves, and you know they can adopt a kind of lifelong learning rather than you know learning for a specific period as we are doing in uh, in, uh, in Pakistan. Like, you know, if, if a doctor is in MBB, is doing MBBS, so he, we think that uh, we should only learn for five or six years and that's it. But e-learning will uh, definitely uh, um, change this culture uh, and the student has to understand that uh, e-learning will, will change their, their lifestyle and it will be a lifelong learning and they can, you know, um, get in touch with, uh, uh, with their teacher and join different workshops and training sessions in order to master all these techniques. And as far as the administration of the universities and different other um, um, educational institutes are concerned, they need to understand that they have to basically create a learning environment for this e-learning culture. They need to provide a learning infrastructure. They need to hire more IT expert and they have to you know, uh, um, adopt new advanced software in order to meet the demand of e-learning. So at, at the conclusion, I would say that at this stage, you know, e-learning is not intended to replace the conventional method. 
and learning in the classroom and labs conventional learning is you know um, is very important way of uh, uh, learning at this age so we need to you know set our boundaries in where we have to you know adopt the modern modalities and we have to you know also in uh, uh, um, keep our conventional method at this age so that we can you know carry both methods and uh, and, and share a lot of information with our student and e-learning can be effective strategy for the development of human resources and to promote international collaboration so by adopting this e-learning i can see that um, uh, the global world will become just a global village the flow of information will be very swift and people will be learning at a, a very higher pace so effective learning will definitely grab the student attention and motivate them to learn to the next level and definitely they will have more information available than um, uh, than the current generation so let's collaborate we need to collaborate at private sector we need to collaborate at government sector we need to collaborate at international sector so without collaboration believe me that this e infrastructure will never progress or it will take ages so i taking an opportunity i will you know initiate this collaboration and i invite all the other uh, all the other scholars students teachers administrative to collaborate in this tough time for humanity and also you know a new this will also open a new horizon for you in uh, learning um, um, and you know um, and progressing toward a new uh, career and a better future thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much sir, for this live session thank you so much it is a really informative session and uh, definitely your proposal is really good uh, no doubt government government agencies like pcp like nurst uh, like draft like pmdcs and other pakistan medical associations they should come forward and should join this collaboration and thank you so much for opting yourself as a collaborator it, it is a really a good offer for us we, we will definitely benefit from it and, uh, other, and other universities and other private sectors can collaborate such as agra khan and other uh, such centers can collaborate for the research purpose so you have shared really a uh, informative uh, it was a really informative session and the information was really good for the students as you have asked the, the teachers to arrange e seminars e conferences e, e workshops this will be really beneficial for the students and teachers as well definitely we will consider this point and will act accordingly we will arrange the seminars and workshops in future with you and with other collaborators as well and for students it will be really a good session so moving onwards now i will invite dr mohammad akram he will share with us the key point for a good e lecture he will summarize the points which are required for building a up a good e lecture sir dr mohammad akram sir please start yes. your lecture please sir dr mohammad akram hello everybody just please, a minute i am trying to share my screen and okay sir we are waiting i think there is some so in in this uh, session uh, there are many new points which i came across as well and definitely students have learned something and uh, i i must say many things from this session um, when we can plan uh, research as well that we can conduct a research survey uh, my message for the students is they should collect the data regarding the psychological stress induced by this current situation this current situation has caused a stress on people and we will definitely look into as well, in this as well so dr mohammad akram ji sir so hello everybody and hello, uh, my name is mohammad akram uh, i would like to share with you how to make an effective webinar presentation and uh, so let's start with this one yes sir Uh, so the contents of my talk i tried to 
make it as brief as possible so but i cannot skip some of the points that i think they are very important when somebody is trying to make uh, an online presentation so first i will tell some general guidelines and then i will let you uh, people know how to start it and uh, then the third most important thing is we need to focus on the audience need uh, we need to think what audience actually require and then uh, the message it should be simple and we need to concentrate on the core message and then there is a very general rule 10 20 30 30 i will tell about this what does this rule means when you are making a webinar and then next is uh, is storytelling and then if somebody has some kind of nervousness while presenting something then how to cope with this thing so let's start with the with some general guidelines uh, the very first thing i would suggest is to you is to use an official template if it's available from the university website or uh, i think the it department from the university they can help to build a very uh, standard template and uh, if it's not possible then it's not difficult so you can build your own your own template and the next thing is the the font when you are building a template you should also focus on the on the font font should should be uniform should be of proper size and you should follow all these in instructions throughout your presentation uh then very next thing is uh, you have to talk in a way that the 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 audience can understand you as i heard from the presentation of dr sohail ijaz he was speaking very excellently and also uh, from professor dr khalid parvez so i i really appreciate this this is the way how you talk and then you need to pronounce the words very accurately so that the people who are listening they can understand it properly and another important thing is you you have to stick to the topic so try to stick to the topic and the uh the last thing which i mentioned here it's not the the last really but is the practice practice and practice so how much practice do you do it depends and uh, before you are starting the webinar the only thing which you can do is you can do the only the practice so how how you can start your presentation so or, or a webinar so if you start your presentation that the first two minutes they are very important these first two minutes they decide the interest of the audience so if you start your presentation with the passion and if you start your presentation with uh, with with a lot of energy and if if you if you if you are you have to make your topic so that in a way that the people find some interest in listening it and your webinar is actually it's it's the product of your work your research or whatever you are doing in your in your research department or in your teaching faculty so you should be confident you should be passionate while you are presenting your your work so i i put an image here from a guy it's uh, steve jobs from apple so while he was giving a talk while he was presenting or or he was just introducing a new product he was fully aware of the product so this is very important while somebody is presenting their work they should fully aware of what they are talking what they are saying and this will surely create an impact to the audience so it, it, a huge amount of confidence is needed for this uh the next thing is uh, when you are presenting something what things you need to consider uh so the first thing is you need to focus on audience sometime in case of webinar you encounter with a different types of audiences like maybe if you are talking something about general in research then you might feel somebody is with from biology background somebody is from chemistry background somebody is maybe from another background or maybe computer science so you you need to design your presentation in a way so that everybody can get something when you are telling something 
And the, the important thing in this case is you need to tell to the people what is their need, not what is the need of a presenter. And another thing is you can, uh, the easiest way to think about this is you can think, okay, I'm going to present something to the audience and let's consider that after 24 hours, what they are going to remember. So if you are telling something really complex, maybe uh, a few people in the world, they can only understand and, and the rest of the audience, they will just think, okay, this is not of our concern or of our interest. So we need to, we need to make the session very informative, very interactive. And also I would suggest that when you are creating a webinar, uh, the most important thing is uh, you need to create an online link like the Dr. Sohail was talking about Google Classroom. I was also uh, learning this Google Classroom last week while the people from Hajveri University contacted me. So this is actually a very good way. And in Google Classroom, even it's possible that you can put an online link from YouTube. Uh, so this was actually very helpful for me also. This was a new for me to how to embed a, an online link from YouTube into the Google Classroom. So uh, create a link and then send via email to all of the participants who are attending the webinar and uh, at least send them one week before so that people can schedule their work and they find some time to, to attend the webinar and then also send again the link one day before. And uh, then also, of course, you can record your session during a webinar. And another thing uh, which I think is very important is if it's possible, try to add subtitles. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure yet how to do this, but maybe I will find a way because these are some commercial programs that allow you to add some subtitles. This would be very helpful so that if, you know, if somebody is speaking very fastly or the webinar is using some specific terms. So if subtitles are below the video, then it would be very informative. So the people, they can watch very informatively. And also, I think it's a good idea to send a link of the recording of webinar to all of the participants that are participating in the webinar. So these are some points which I think from the audience point of view, they are very important. And uh, uh, here I put an example how to make uh, an interactive session. Uh, so uh, the one thing is you can put some questions into your webinar based on, on your slides, how many slides you have presented and uh, which kind of question you can generate from these slides. Like here I put like, what is the deadliest disease in the whole world? So I have given like, it, it could be HIV, tuberculosis, diabetes mellitus, ischemic heart disease, road traffic accidents, or is it a COVID-19? So then you, you let the people think. So they will think and they will respond. Then you can tell to the people, okay, this much, this much percentage of the people tell the right answer and this much people of the percentage, they are, they are not in a right way. So in this current situation, it's the ischemic heart disease is the most deadliest disease in the world, according to WHO. Uh, so this is the one example you can make the, the webinar informative and interactive. And the next uh, point is how you can, how you can make it simple and try to concentrate on the core message of your webinar. Uh, so many people, they say that, but what should be the key message of webinar? It should be communicated very briefly. So, that if you tell to somebody, they can, they can remember maybe a sentence from your webinar so they can get, okay, what is the concept behind? Or some people suggest also you can put a, a little brief summary, a 30 seconds elevated summary. And, and your summary should be smart and it should be short, like a few points. And uh, this 10, 20, 30 rule, uh, so normally the slides, they should be less than 10. And uh, 
the time which you take for your presentation it also should be less than 20 minutes and uh, the font size which you use it should not be less than 30 so what is the reason behind the font size uh, if you use this font size then you will not put a lot of text in your slide so if you will not put a lot of text in your slide it would be clear it would be readable to the audience and it would be understanding for them uh, and the next thing is that's very important is the storytelling uh, i would say personally that those people who have a a good technique how to tell a story they are the excellent presenters Uh, because the human brains they are programmed in a way so that they respond to the stories they they interact with the stories like if you see the any webinars on the youtube or ted talks i think most of you are familiar with the ted talks if you listen to the ted talk they are of 15 minutes normal duration from 15 to 20 some uh, some are even less than 15 minutes and in these 15 minutes the presenter they try to to tell you the whole concept that is behind their talk in just 15 minutes and and they are very informative very interactive we can also get some information from them how they present the stuff so this is very important uh, a lot of information is not necessary but a very smart information is very necessary and then also while you are telling to the story maybe you connect the the points which you think they are very important in your story you can remind them in a very brief way in 10 seconds during your talk again and again to the presenters and uh, another thing that is very important is you should ask questions also to the audience so this will create an interaction with the audience during a webinar also it's possible uh, you can ask them questions so they will respond you when they will respond you they will listen your next slide very carefully because you are going to interact with them again so this is very important uh so let's come to the last point what if somebody is feeling nervousness during a webinar or what they think okay i'm going to present something and i'm going so to to online and how to cope with the stress so what you can do before your webinar is you can do rehearsal you can practice you can practice as many times as possible so that you you are confident that you can go in live with full confidence and right before starting the webinar if you are still feeling stressed you can take real deep breath three times at least and then drink water i don't suggest drinking coffee because coffee is diuretic so and then during the webinar you can take little very little pauses this will also help you with your speech and uh, you should talk with confidence and and during the webinar the most important thing is you should not think about yourself you have to think about the audience and you need to tell them what what is the point what is the concept behind so this is very important if you will start thinking about yourself you cannot tell to the people what are you going to tell and uh, after the webinar you can ask them uh, what is their feedback and based on their feedback i think they they everybody has a feedback you should consider them and trying to improve your presentation skills uh, so this is a a short talk which i just compiled it and uh, if is there are any questions regarding this uh, i'm very happy to answer them thank you so much sir thank you so uh, thank you sir it was really informative session through this sessions uh, our teachers and our students have learned how they can make their their sessions or their presentations more interactive and more valuable definitely there are many points which came across that there should be 10 slides and i used to and i was of previously of the idea that there should be maximum slides before uh, 
uh, watching your uh, presentation then making as much as slides there are there it will be more informative but now i came to know if it is 10 slides even then it's good so i de i will definitely incorporate into uh, my learning and my lectures as well and i hope my teachers will incorporate your ideas and your suggestions thank you so much so now there is a moving forward quickly uh, dr sahel jas has a uh, training session right now a hand on training session he will tell us how we can edit our videos because at very university has focused on video editing as as a teacher deliver a lecture on a zoom that is 1.5 hours lecture is delivered the teacher compose a video of the 20 minutes that is a core concept video it is mandatory for all the teachers to overcome the connectivity issues because in pakistan there are electricity issues there are other issues signal are dropped something like this whatever there is a teacher should record their core concept videos of at least 20 minutes and should place it on the google classroom account for this we really need help of how we can edit it and how we can make this video more crispy so dr sheli jaz will today help us and will tell us how we can make our video more valuable more attractive for our viewers for our students and as a for the community in general thank you so much sir you can start your video editing training thank you sir thank you very much dr lubna um and uh, dr akram so uh, as he was stating that it is very important to have um, um, a very brief and to the point um, slides for your teacher and uh, include uh, you know a kind of a, a storytelling sense in your presentation so this is basically uh, uh, the key of e learning if you don't you know improve your um, your proficiencies in these two points your your presentation will become very bored and very it will have a very low impact in uh, on on your student so first thing in in per, in creating um, an online lecture that can be used for e learning is creating uh, an a, a very you know simplified type of uh, presentation so it is a, a, a bit a long process uh, uh, due to shortage of time i don't think that this will be uh, one of the possibilities so uh, what i will do i will just you know uh, upload my lectures to to my youtube channel so uh, all the student you know, are are the teacher who who want to uh, really get a, a depth of video editing for for your e lectures they can you know um, subscribe to that uh, channel and uh, if they have any issue or if they have any information they uh, or if they need any information they can get in touch with me so the first thing uh, in order to produce a video lecture is to convert your presentation with a green background i will come to a point why we, we why we need to convert the back why we need to change our background to a greenish one but um, uh, you, the first thing is that you you need to change uh, the background of all your slides um, uh, in a, in a common green color. This is because we can easily uh, remove this color and um, we can uh, sync our um, video and the presentation together. So, uh, Dr. Rubna, give me give me five minutes so that I can you know switch my computers and uh, can connect. Uh, it to my uh, studio so i will be back in a couple of minutes assalamu alaikum again uh, now uh, for the viewers i will share that this session is not for today it is a series of lectures every week we will come to your screen it is either your mobile screen your laptop screen whatever you are using stay tuned you will we will come every saturday at 2 pm to your screen and we'll share the expertise many experts from the pakistan and from abroad will join us this is my message thank you so much Okay, uh, so for this uh, online training session, uh, hold on, just a minute. Yes, sir, we are watching. Yeah, hold on, uh, I need to 
turn off the speaker of my computer. Hold on. Okay, sir. We are listening. <laughs> okay, for can you hear me? Yes, sir. We, we can hear. Okay, you. so uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. It is YouTube. Uh, is yeah. So, um, in order to in order to you know um, have this video lecture, I would refer you to download Kind Master because uh, on your on your mobile phone because it will be much easier for you to um, have access to your presentation and um, um, then you can you know edit your video at your own ease. So. I will just give you an overview how we can, you know, create a very short presentation. So uh, this is a, a very brief video that uh, I prepared yesterday in order to, um, which was, you know, related with this uh, conference. So I will share how we can, you know, produce this. So in order to produce the, the similar type of uh, the videos, what you need uh, is basically uh, your videos with, with that has to be recorded with, with, the, with the white background, with, the, with, with uh, a one sort of the background that you can easily remove. As you can see here that I have recorded my video with a green background. So using this software, we can easily remove our um, green background or any other single background. And then um, um, uh, you can easily, you know, place yourself uh, on, uh, um, on, on this slide. So as I, I was saying that um, you need to convert your um, presentation into a, a video. So you can easily do that by exporting the video into a video by exporting your presentation into a video and then you can basically merge together by uh, through through different layers of this uh, uh, of this program so uh, and similarly you can also you know cut or crop any any session that you don't want to um, share with the audience and um, you can always uh, include uh, the text you want um, in, within your presentation. And similarly, if there is an audio uh, that you want to add up into your video, you can also easily add up. So, um, I mean, due to shortage of, shortage of the time, uh, I'm unable to, you know, go through all these things because this is really a time consuming. So what we have planned is to uh, focus on um, uh, a separate uh, um, lectures that, uh, so that we can take you through all these uh, um, preparations and uh, uh, all the trainings. So uh, I think in the upcoming session, I will um, uh, I will share my ideas and my experience with all you people, so that you can also uh, create a similar type of the videos, video lecture for your um, e-learning and uh, e-teaching materials. So um, the plan is that I will upload all these uh, training session to my uh, YouTube channel so that you can easily uh, learn all this technique at your pace. Thank you very much. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for telling us how we can edit our value uh, and how we can add value to our video with respect to the background, with content, all others. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, do you have any questions, Dr. Akram, Sir Khalid Pervez, do you have any questions? Uh, sir, Dr. Khalid Pervez, uh, do you have any questions regarding your video editing? My, my mic is perhaps off. Uh, now it's on. We can listen you, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. So uh, I, I want to be thankful to Dr. Ajaz and Dr. Muhammad Akram for their nice presentation. We have learned a lot actually from your presentation and from your guidance. And the idea of uh, 
Dr. Sahel is that this should be a mixture of physical uh, and e-learning uh, systems because definitely uh, only the, the e-learning cannot do all the things because the practical labs, we need the practicals and the guidance physically, the students should come and learn that one. So HEC is making plan something that how we can do the deficiency, we can uh, face this deficiency. They, they may uh, have uh, recommend some particular labs that the students go and visit there and they can perform their practical. It's definitely good because we don't have any other alternative. E-learning is the best one. So we cannot leave this as well because this is the need of the day. All the things are going to be on uh, electronic uh, electronic procedures, even everything, even I want to call a taxi, so I have to go to the number and say, okay, I need this one. So even the e-shopping, it has been started now. So even in Pakistan, the central government has allowed the e-shopping to the even very small shopkeeper. So this is the need of the day. We cannot leave this one. And uh, Dr. Akhams, we are very thankful to you that the slides should, be, should not be more than 10 and the Total presentation should not be more than 20 minutes. It's excellent. So we learned a lot from it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir Akram, any other tip you want to share? Uh, because we are moving towards the cl closing of this session and we will conclude this session. And I will definitely say thanks. Uh, and on the uh, behalf of the chairman, board of governors, my faculty, my department, my administrative administration staff, I would really like to thank everybody. For concluding remarks, I will now invite uh, Mr. Umar Sheikh, Director, Office of Planning and Development. Sir, please show your concluding remarks. Shukriya ji, Bismillah rahman rahim Ramzan Mubarak, and Assalamu alaikum to my colleagues, our Sir. honorable guest speakers, and to everyone who is watching us from the other side of their computer screens. We have quite a few number of faculty members and students who have joined us today on this inaugural session of HU Live e-learning strategies. This is being live webcast on Facebook as well. And I just want to begin by honoring everyone who is watching this webinar today. By just being a part of this discussion today, you are defeating the demons of procrastination and unproductivity. You're being active and learning new things. So thank you for joining us. You're not using the pandemic as an excuse to not do anything. Um, Hajveri University Facebook page has 2.3 million fans. Uh, so everybody who is just joining us, welcome to the first inaugural session of HU e-learning live training session. Since we have students in the audience as well, I would like to discuss two things briefly because students are confused uh, the, the lines of communication need to be broadened and the students need to be become a part of this discussion. So uh, for the students who are listening, I would the first thing that I would like to discuss are the challenges and the opportunities of online learning. And my second agenda will be going beyond academics. How your university, how has very university plans to keep it's three our students mentally and physically challenged through the curricular and extracurricular activities starting from this very month. So ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about online learning. Let's talk about the economy at large and what the technology has done to this. This brave new world that we live in is one of scientific and technological revolutions. Uh, a couple of years back, I believe it was last year, uh, Dr. Sohail Ijaz Saab was kind enough to hold a seminar. And he was sharing such cutting edge research that I was in awe. But towards, the, towards his last slide, uh, he said that the Cambridge University does not allow me to share the current updated research. So this research that I'm showing you is five years back. But even then, the technological advancements that have enabled human societies and the economies to develop themselves and overcome the challenges are incredible. Just in the past one decade, since the last 12 years, uh, since we saw the, the, the recession in 2008, the, the, the global economy transitioned into what is being called a digitally distributed economy. An economy where your goods and services are increasingly distributed digitally. 
So basically our banks and our banking became branchless. Our marketplaces became online. Our ticketing, our stock exchanges, our governments went paperless. The services sector by and large became online and while the manufacturing sector invested more and more in robotics and technology uh, than in human labor for their production needs. And the same goes for education. Take today, for example, we have three eminent speakers from three different countries and an audience from all over the world joining us with a simple press of a button. We may be socially distanced, but we are hyper connected by technology. And this technology has enabled humans to overcome some of the negative impacts of the current pandemic by allowing millions of people to work from their homes. Students currently pursuing degree programs are uniquely positioned from, to benefit from these technologies during this long lockdown. But there is a lot of confusion. Students feel that online education is not at par is a compromise solution. So I wanted to bring all of you a part of this discussion. The, the, the pandemic and the loss of life and livelihoods is a very tragic uh, and very unfortunate, but these just may be exciting times for education and here's why. The modes of instruction and delivery standards haven't evolved much in the past two decades. Students and teachers come together in traditional classrooms and deliver an education what can be what, what, what is being termed as a one size fits all education misal ke taur par ek class hai 75 students ki now each student has a different academic need is tarah haath ki pancho ungliyan barabar nahi hoti ek class mein uh, sare students ki learning needs ek jaisi nahi hoti मगर जब एक टीचर क्लासरूम में आता है बच्चों को फेस करता है उसने टाइम ही इज ही और शी इज टाइम बाउंड टू डिलीवर द सेम लेक्चर टू एवरी स्टूडेंट देयर बाय क्रिएटिंग लर्निंग गैप्स सम स्टूडेंट्स हैव ए वीकर एकेडमिक बैकग्राउंड दे कैन नॉट ग्रास्प द कॉन्सेप्ट्स सम स्टूडेंट्स ऑब्वियसली आर वेरी ब्राइट दे आर वेरी हार्ड वर्किंग एंड दे टेंड टू पिक ऑन कॉन्सेप्ट्स अर्ली ऑन बट व्हाट अबाउट दोस स्टूडेंट्स एंड 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 दीस स्टूडेंट्स मेक अप द मेजॉरिटी मोर देन 50% once the lecture is delivered and the learning gaps are created this creates further learning gaps and we cannot and the students cannot achieve their optimal level of learning so this is where the online learning can help each and every student by providing self paced learning self paced learning is already institutionalized in western societies there are a number of organizations Uh, big huge organizations which are creating online courses for schools for universities which are being supplemented even especially during these times in in states like new york uh, there is a there is a organization called khan academy which is especially catering towards the school education so uh, this comes to the uh, subject of what hajveri university is doing as part of its hu e learning um uh, efforts so basically hajveri university has adopted an e learning model based on the flipped classroom or the hybrid learning model now ab sawal puchhenge ye flipped classroom kya hai so basically jo ek traditional classroom hota hai usme teacher faculty member pehle lecture deliver karta hai aur fir apne students ko assignments deta hai in a flipped classroom the learning is reversed first the the teacher delivers a uh, a pre recorded session on uh, online and then they, uh, they and then the teacher conducts an online session so basically in a traditional setting the faculty member delivers a lecture and gives assignments right the flipped classroom model incorporates two methods of teaching the first is pre recorded lectures and the second are live interactive sessions on zoom this means that the faculty member will upload their recorded videos lectures on google classroom before taking the online lecture thus the student from all academic needs whether he or she is a weak student whether they are a strong student they can watch the videos just as we watch videos on youtube or netflix they can pause the videos they can rewind it watch it as many times as they need 
in order to grasp the, the core concepts, the very foundations of the course, so that they can bring upon the more complex problem solving from there upon. So this is the concept of self-paced learning. Aap apne time pe, apne device pe, dunya ke kisi kone mein, aap kabhi bhi lectures ko sun sakte hain, jitni marzi baar sun sakte hain, and these lectures are uh, specifically pre-recorded so that you can understand the core concepts. So the next step of the flipped classroom learning is when the teacher conducts the interactive session. So this, for our, for our, for our environment in the lockdown, uh, the government has, has instituted, the government, is, the Higher Education Commission is promoting and, and advocating universities to hold online lectures. For that, HU is using the Zoom platform. Teachers, once, once students have seen their pre-recorded lectures in a couple of, in the next few days, uh, the teacher will conduct an online interactive Zoom session. Uh, the learning process is more streamlined because students now understand unke learning gaps kya hai, unko kaun se concepts samaj nahi aare. So that interactive session is more guided. And this also develops a sense of academic community among students through live interactive sessions, which enriches the overall learning process for the students. So um, to recap, hum basically Dr. Sohail Ijaz sahab ne aapko live yes synchronous or asynchronous methods ke baare mein bataya. Pakistan ki universities ya phir synchronous models ko apply kar rahi hain ya phir asynchronous ko kar rahi hain. Hajveri University un wahid universities mein se hai jo koshish kar rahi hai aur unki aur unke aksar departments hi kar bhi rahe hain maujooda kar rahe hain ke flipped classroom ke tahat pehle aapko students tak lecture leke aate hain aur phir uske live sessions karte hain. So we are basically adopting the best of both worlds in our e-learning uh, model. So, and this is as per HEC, HEC policy, where there are opportunities, there are also a lot of challenges. We are hearing those challenges from the, from the all universities, as well as our students, uh, that there are uh, issues with the connectivity. The HEC as a whole is concerned and trying to work out how to do labs, how to do practicals, how to do final assessments in a way that produces the academic rigor that is necessary for university courses. And so basically, we will be following, uh, Hajveri University will be following Higher Education Commission's guidelines, policies to the letter and spirit in, in, all, in all matters uh, related to the online learning. And let me also take this moment to thank Higher Education Commission, which is actively advocating online, uh, online learning. This is to safeguard uh, the academic careers of the students. This is for the sake of students. And I hope students uh, take this in a, in a positive, in a positive uh, manner. So this brings uh, me to agenda number two, uh, going beyond academics. University life, your social development, is not just what happens in the classroom, it is also all the allied facilities and the activities, the, the, the mentally and physically challenge, challenging activities, which are uh, provided um, beyond the classroom. So while taking your classes in, is important, it is equally important to improve your communication skills, your leadership skills, your time management skills, and a host of other hard and soft skills which are essential, which are absolutely essential to your success as professionals in the coming years. At HU, we want to make sure that students are not left out from these opportunities during the online learning period and the lockdown. Uh, Hajveri University is a platform for all our students to come together, arrange meaningful events through the student-led societies. And even during these times, we want to empower our students to do just that. So I am pleased to share with you, I am pleased to inform you that during this holy month of Ramadan, there will be a Nath Kwan, uh, event uh, and a debating competition, which will be held live on Zoom and it will be telecast to an audience of 2.3 million fans on HU Facebook and YouTube platforms. And in the following months, in the next month, Eid Ke Baad, inshallah, uh, students from uh, HU School of Fashion and Textile Design as well as the Department of Media Studies will be promoting their creative work through live talk shows and segments such as me and my thesis. So students uh, who cannot, uh, especially uh, fashion and tech 
excel students who are unable to continue their their programs because of the nature of their labs and studios they have uh, they will still be coming in front of you and they will be sharing their inspirations and the work they have done and we are all looking forward to the and the me and my thesis segments uh, so there are plenty of exciting events planned to add value to your student life at hu and i encourage all hu students to get involved and please participate in these events remember you will not get this time back please use it wisely you will not i repeat get this time back aapko ye waba ghar pe mehdood kar sakti hai zindagi mafroz kar sakti hai magar aapko likhne se padhne se nayi cheeze seekhne se koi nahi rok sakta wo gone are those days when education was was uh, stuck in silos in universities today everything is accessible through a click so please uh, use this time very wisely mujhe se molana rumi marhum ki ek bahut achhi unki ek saying hai trade your cleverness for your bewilderment so he was very rightly preaching his followers to forego cleverness for new knowledge so please always keep learning and always keep growing trade your cleverness for your bewilderment finally on behalf of hajveri university it is an absolute honor and a pleasure for me to thank our two brilliant guest speakers for gracing today's training session dr sohail ajaz sahab hails from the one the only uh, university of cambridge he has an illustrious career as a, a researcher thank you dr sahab for sharing your expertise with our faculty members and our students uh, we've previously enjoyed your seminars on campus at hu and today your presentation on creating online assets and online teaching was very inspiring uh, for our audience uh, our second eminent speaker today was dr mohammad akram sahab from paracelsus medical university in austria thank you dr sahab for sharing your expertise and your best practices with us regarding forming formulating articulating the course materials in the slides for the better understanding of both parties gentlemen you are both a source of inspiration for our faculty members and students at hajveri university thank you so much for participating in today's training session we look forward to uh, your upcoming sessions in the weeks to come i would also like to take this moment and thank our departments especially the department of faculty of pharmaceutical sciences and the uh, faculty of physical therapy who have come out at the fore of the online learning they have been proactive they have been developing their course materials and to all those individual teachers especially the media studies and other individual teachers from individual departments who have uh, shined out by by delivering quality education uh, it has become a more apparent that teachers who are good in classrooms are also good in online it's technology is just an enabling enabling uh, vehicle uh, so uh, there is there are still several issues we have only taken those courses and those programs online which are certified as online ready other programs are still under review the progress uh, is being made and inshallah in the in the in the months that follow if the situation of the lockdown persist then we will again be following the government guidelines and bringing those courses and those um and those uh, programs online i would also like to thank dr khalid parvez sahab our rector and dr lubna our hod for arranging such live sessions for the benefit of students and teachers at hu open communication is the key to overcoming mental barriers of social distancing and online learning so i i look forward to more live sessions from our departments at hu from our students who are bringing their voices who are who are engaging themselves and the community hu community at large in plenty of lots of positive ways uh, on that note everyone who joined us today allah subhanahu wa taala aap sab ko aapki families ko apne hifz o man mein rakhe allah hafiz and back to you dr lubna thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you for your for your concluding remarks one thing i drive out of this was excellent that is use the time definitely we must and the students especially should not waste their time everyone take this time as an opportunity and learn and learn and share with others because there are no barriers right now because everything is open and everything is at the access of a single click 
in the end i would really like to thank professor dr mohammad khalid parvez thank you sir thank you for joining us uh, dr saheb nijaz dr mohammad akram asif saab and everybody who has helped us in arranging this event and making it a success thank you so much and thank you students for listening and for viewing us thank you everybody allah hafiz take care and stay healthy and stay at home thank you allah hafiz